sure to check out Agile's Geeks for your figures and collectibles. This video and YouTube channel is rated PG-13, so that means this channel is not for anyone under the age of 13. So what is going on my fellow collectors? How is everybody doing today? Daredevil 18 here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Bandai Tamashii Nation's SH Fig Yards Avengers Loki. So let's get into it right away and take a quick look at the box. So we do get a pretty cool looking style box here for Loki. We do get the window right there on the front of the box. On the top does the SH Fig Yards. We do get the Tamashii Nation's quality sticker as well. Then we do get a nice drawn image of the character along with an image of the figure. So it's Marvel Avengers Loki Tamashii Nation's and Bandai. And then here is the bottom of the box with an image of the figure, the top of the box there. Then the one side with another image of Loki. The other side has another image of the figure. And then the back does have a few more images of the figure. But anyway, that is the packaging. Let's get this figure up to take a close look at one of Marvel's best MCU villains, which they had very few of. Alrighty, taking a closer detailed look at Loki here and the Machinations did a fantastic job when it comes to the detail for this Loki here. It looks just like Tom Hiddleston. I believe that's how you pronounce his last name. It does look exactly like him with the face sculpt. So A plus for that. The paintwork on the face looks great. The eyes both painted looking in the same direction. Uh, the hair sculpt looks great too. It is two pieces. The sculpt on the actual head. And then we do get this extra piece here. But the sculpt of it looks great. It is a little sharp so be careful of that there. And the cape, not a fan of it. I, I'm, I'm glad they gave us a cloth cape, but it just sits like that the whole time. You can't move it or anything, and, and I don't know. I, I'm just, they should have threw wire in it. I don't know why they didn't, but the material of the cape is pretty nice, and I do like the, uh, the color green. The stitching also turned out pretty good, too, but definitely uh, needed some wire in that cape there, and I like where they have it glued in there and this is probably my favorite aspect to the figure this gold armor throughout his uh coat here i love the black wash that they added throughout the gold beautiful parts on the figure definitely the, the best part i think to this loki figure that just looks so great the gauntlet beautiful tiny sculpt detail on that i love the design on it that looks great man Jeez, even up here looks awesome like I said, the shoulder pieces look great, so sick job with the gold pieces, man. And then we got some great sculpted wrinkles all throughout this coat here. The paint's very, uh, pretty good for the most part for the gold. They could have added a little more in certain spots, or actually I think that might be a wash, sorry. My mistake there. And then the front of it looks pretty good too. Really cool looking, I like the uh, sculpted texture on the lower portion of it there. And then what he's wearing underneath, uh, great sculpt and paint. Once again, great job with the gold pieces with the black wash. I like the, the bits of green in there. I like, like these overlaying pieces on the lower torso. That looks pretty cool. And I do love the gold paint that they used as well. And this jacket is a soft rubbery type plastic. So is like this skirt type piece or sash type piece. It's a soft rubbery type plastic. And I like how the inside is that, that really nice green color. Really cool looking, man. They, they did do a very nice job with the detail on this Loki here. And then for the pants, nice sculpted wrinkles all throughout it. The gold, once again with the wash, looks great. Very nice job on that. And then the boots turned out really nice too. We get a, a bit of a sculpted texture on the front there. Some buckles and stuff looking pretty nice. Uh, some subtle sculpted wrinkles all throughout it. And the feet, the feet are fine. Nothing too crazy going on. And then the bottom we do get some sculpt detail. So overall the detail on this Loki I think uh, best part about the uh, the figure. There is some issues which I, I will go over shortly. And also not a fan of how they did the cape. Like I said, I'm, I'm glad that it's a cloth cape. But for me, it doesn't really sit well on the figure. It looks alright, but that's how it's always going to look. And I wish I could pose it around, you know what I mean? So anyway, that is the detail. Let's continue on. Moving on to the accessories, Loki is included with a pretty damn good amount of stuff. So what we do get, we do get three interchangeable faces, an alternate helmeted head sculpt, and then we do get an interchangeable lower hairpiece. Then starting on the left there, we do get the basic stern face, which is the one that does come on the figure out of the packaging, and that one probably is my favorite 
out of all three of them. And then in the middle, we do get the psychotic, smiling, or laughing head sculpt. And excellent job on that one. They did a, a superb job on all three faces. All of them look exactly like Tom Hiddleston. Hiddleston. Hiddleston? Hiddleston. One or the other is the proper way to say his last name, but they did a really nice job with uh, these head skulls, man. Even the eyes look fantastic. And then all the way on the right, we do get another basic stern type face, but he does have the mouthpiece on, so Thor can keep him from talking, so he, he, he can't talk. And they did a great job with that head sculpt as well. And I'm glad that Tomashi Nations finally gave us more than one facial expression with an MCU figure. So thank you so much, Tamashi Nations, for that. And all the head sculpts are pretty simple to swap out. I'll show you how to do that shortly, but let's take a look at the other two accessories he is included with. So we do get the interchangeable head sculpt, which is the helmeted head sculpt. And just like with the gold on his armor, beautiful, beautiful job on this, man. I, I love that they added that black wash all throughout it. And this might be my favorite accessory. Loki's helmet is just so, so over-exaggerated with these horn pieces. It just looks dope, man. So very cool looking helmet. And then we do get an interchangeable lower hair piece. And this is meant for the helmeted head sculpt so you can get the helmet on there. And I'll show you how to swap that along with the faces right now quickly. So the way you swap the faces and the head sculpts and the lower portion of the hair is pretty simple to do. So for these face sculpts here, for the head sculpt with his hair, what I do is I pull up on the chin and it pops right off there. Now, the way I get these head sculpts on is I, I push the forehead under the hair first to make sure that it's going to go on there and you won't see any gaps between the hairline and the forehead and temple there. And that is how I get it on. So I push it up on the top of the hair first and I push the rest of the face in. So pretty simple to swap the faces on this head sculpt. Now the way you swap the head sculpts and the faces on the helmeted head sculpt is fairly simple as well. So we have to remove, I guess I'll just whoops, take the face off here and we gotta get the head sculpt off. So you just pop it off the ball peg. Now we have to remove this hair piece and put this one on here. And this can be a bit difficult to get on. Once you have it on, you really cannot move the, the, the neck joint around. So, so what I do is something like this, and you got to push down. Be careful not to break these. I mean, it might be better to take that piece off, actually. So you got to push down, and there you go. So we got that on, and then take whatever face you want to put on. Just line up the pegs properly on the face. Peg that in and then just peg the front of the helmet on and then there you go you have Loki with the different lower portion of the hair and the helmeted head sculpt but when you like move it around the front of it pops off so you really and this face likes to pop off there as well so you really can't pose around the helmeted head sculpt too much I mean you move it side to side a little bit and swivel it just make sure you hold the face and the helmet on if you do plan on moving the head sculpt around there so we do get that stuff and then we also get some asgardian handcuffs two different scepters and then we do get the tesseract cube which is also an infinity stone and starting off with the tesseract this looks great it's a, a nice blue translucent plastic and then looks like how it did in the movies there so tamashi nations definitely did a, a good job with that we do get the Asga asgardian Handcuffs here, which also turned out really nice. Very nice paint with the gold and that like gunmetal grayish type color. And these fit right on them, and I'll show you that shortly. And then we do get two different scepters, which are the same exact ones. As you can see, one's just shorter, and then one is the uh, longer extended version. And this one also has like an added piece on there as well, which I do like the way that looks. But these turned out... Beautiful. Very nice sculpt and paint detail. We do have like a, a, a stone in there, I believe. Maybe it's, I believe it's the Infinity Stone, if I'm not mistaken there. And it is a nice like light blue translucent plastic. And then the rest 
of the handle for the shorter scepter looks great. And then same with the longer one here. And the way you get him to grip onto this, you just unpeg it there, slide his hand or hands on, and then just peg it right back on. And same goes for the shorter one there. So we do get that stuff. And let me show you how to get the handcuffs on right now. And the way you get the handcuffs on is very simple, but also I wanted to show you this. So I will show you shortly. There's a little indent kind of shaped in a triangle on his palm, and that is meant for him to be able to hold the Tesseract there. So pretty cool that they did that. Now for the handcuffs, you have to pop the hands off first. Well, you do one at a time, and then just slide the handcuff onto his wrist there, peg the hand back on, do the same thing with the other hand, and then just peg, whoops. Damn it! Got it. And then just peg that hand back on, and then there you go, he's ready to go to the Asgardian jail with Thor. And I do like the handcuffs, oh yeah, and you have to put, whoops, this face on as well when you have him with the handcuffs on. There you go. Now he is ready to go to jail. So we do get all that awesome stuff. And then we finally get eight alternate hands. Then starting on the top right here, we do get a pair of fists, of course, which do come on the figure out of the packaging. Then we do get a pair of gripping hands where the thumb is molded together to the fingers there. And then we do get a pair of open type hands where his fingers are, are very close to each other as you can see there and then we do get a pair of open tight hands but his fingers are a bit clenched and if you look on the palm there is a little indent there which is meant for him to be able to hold on to the tesseract which i believe i already showed you but we do get some nice sculpt and nice paintwork with the gold once again on the armor and all the hands are very simple to swap out as well and like what daredevil 19 always says that is a good thing because you don't want to risk breaking a wrist joint on your new SH Figuarts Loki figure. But anyway, that is all the accessories included with Loki. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review, shall we? We shalleth! Now, for the height of Loki to the very top of his hair, it looks like he's a bit under 6 inches tall. And then here he is compared to the SH Figuarts Battle Version Mark 85 Ironing Board Man, the SH Figuarts First Avengers Captain America, the Mafex Infinity War Thor, and the SH Figuarts Infinity War Hulk. And I do like the scaling with these other figures. I believe he is shorter than all these other characters. Definitely like the scaling of him next to Thor there. And not sure if Loki was really this short. I do like that Thor is taller than him, but I feel like he's definitely a bit too small for the, these figures here. I don't believe he was this much smaller than the other characters, so they definitely could have made Loki a bit taller. And then here he is compared to the SH Figuarts Infinity War Thanos, the SH Figuarts solo movie Black Widow, the Marvel Legends Doctor Doom, and the Marvel Legends movie version Venom. And as you can see here, I, I still think he is a bit short compared to these other figures. I mean, Black Widow is almost as tall as him. So yeah, the scaling I think is definitely off for Loki here. And then here he is compared to the Storm Collectible Sector, the Marvel Legends Retro Series Deadpool, the Mafex Justice League Batman, and the Figma Black Swordsman Guts. And then here he is compared to the ESH Figuarts Awaken Warrior Super Saiyan Goku and the Mezco 112 Deadpool. Anyway, there's some quick comparisons. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review. So now for the articulation, and this is where the figure takes a huge nosedive and crashes. Tamashi Nations failed miserably with the articulation on this figure. Not happy with it at all, man. So we do get two joints at the neck. The hair does restrict it, so you cannot get them to look up at all, which I understand that. Does look down okay. You do get... <laughs> whoops. You do get, all right, pivot, the hair does restrict it once again, and then you do get a, a bit of swivel there as well. Then we do get a torso and a waist joint there, and combining both those joints, crunches forward a, a tad 
bit not too far forward though going back just goes back a tiny bit the the coat is restricting it the pivot at the waist is pretty good and it's oh, damn it there's an issue i do have with the figure uh it's not the pivot at the waist is really good and it's okay at the torso you do get swivel at the waist the strap does restrict some of the swivel though as you can see because it's connected here at the upper torso and then on like that skirt sash type piece then you do get slight swivel at the torso not too much so the torso and waist okay not the best not the worst now the arms here you do get a little bit of a circular motion as you can see there and then they do go out to the sides 90 degrees they do go up only that much because this part of the armor does restrict it and then we do not have true bicep swivel you will have to use it at the shoulder or you could use it at the single jointed elbows that just hit 90 degrees and they only swivel a tiny bit there where the joint connects into the bicep then we do have a ball hinge on the wrist so that does swivel and hinges back and forth now if you notice the leg popped off before and that is an issue i keep having with this damn figure as you can see it did it again and it's extremely frustrating i don't know why it keeps doing it but with the leg joints on loki they do shift down a tiny bit and since he has that cut right there and that skirt tight piece you can get him to kick forward 90 degrees with it but with the left leg it does restrict some of that articulation as you can see there and then going back they go to the back a tiny bit does get restricted by the coat piece as you can see let's see if loki can jean-claude van damme it and he almost can with the right leg the left leg is getting restricted by uh his clothing there so i guess technically he can van damme it it just gets hindered by this piece here then you do get a bit of a hip swivel single jointed knees that bend back a little more than 90 degrees joint doesn't really swivel where it connects into the thigh does swivel a bit where it connects into the lower leg then the ankles worst ankle joints i have ever seen on an sh figure arts figure so and they always pop off also so they really can't swivel because <laughs> of these pieces here they don't go up at all and they do go down they go down okay but they they can't go up at all damn it stop falling off you bloody foot and then the pivot none at all no pivot on this figure at all. What? Like, come on, Tamashii Nations. Really? No damn pivot with Loki here. But then you do get an all right toe hinge. So the articulation, not good at all, man. I did not have fun posing this figure because you can't really put him in any type types of poses because of the articulation. Not good articulation, man. And then... I, I did not have fun at all posing this figure around, and you're really not going to be able to get him in too many evil villainous like poses. But I'm going to show you what poses I was able to get him into right about now. But anyway, that is my review of the SH Figyards Loki. Hope you enjoyed it. If I had to rate this figure with detail, definitely give it an 8.5. Articulation, I'd have to give it a, a 4. Accessories, I'd give it an even 9. And then the overall quality, I'd give an even 8. If you would like to know the price and where to buy this figure, I did have mine imported from Japan, but I'm sure my buddy from Ageless Geeks does have this in stock, so you can check at agelessgeeks.com, and when you check out, use code name Daredevil, and you will get yourself a bit of a discount. If you can't find something on their website, I do highly recommend going through their Instagram or Facebook page. I will put more information in the description below. And if you would like to support the channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on that notification bell. And if you liked it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, oh well, I guess you didn't like it. But thanks for watching. I will see you later. SH Fig Yards, Marvel's, what, <laughs> to my Shunitians, and Bandai. And then here is the bottom of the box with an, uh, blah, 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 blah. some hand, some, uh,
which do come on the figure out of the packaging and all the hands smell like poop. <laughs>